In today's episode, I'm going to set the stage for you guys on why it's imperative to venture beyond just the fundamentals of Python, but yet to learn advanced modules to help further your learning and understanding of Python. That's right guys, Python, or as I like to call it, the Swiss Army Knife of programming languages. It's embraced by developers all around the world, and in my ongoing series of mastering the fundamentals of Python, here we are in the final step, and we're gonna bring it all together with advanced Python modules. Now, I'm not gonna teach you any module here, but I'm gonna show you why and how you can use them to truly reinforce those core foundational skills that you've learned these last six weeks. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here, you guessed it, I'm Josh. Do me a favor, hit the like button and smash the subscribe button, as I'm a growing channel, and that really helps me reach more students around the world. And I have something for you guys. If you're looking for a free handcrafted Python guide that I've spent time making for you and I give to all my students on the first day of class, it's the first link in the description. And today, I'm now including a free Git guide that's going to help you get started with Git today. It's the first link in the description. Head on down and grab yourself a copy as we close out these last seven weeks of Mastering Python. Before I plunge into the world of Python libraries, very quickly let's talk about why it's important to do this. Well, you should be so proud of yourself. Over these last six weeks you have learned so much, and everything you've learned are the core fundamentals of Python. You've gone from basic variables and control structures all the way to creating your own functions, importing and using Python modules, as well as the topic of object-oriented programming. This is everything you've been doing, and not to mention the four data structures that you should have been using along the way. These are the core fundamentals that you'll need going forward in your Python journey. Now it's time to focus on what interests you in Python. That's what we're here to talk about today. A true understanding of anything often involves stepping outside of your comfort zone. That's how we grow. That's how we get anywhere in life. It's by stepping outside of our comfort zones. Let's take everything up here that you've learned these last seven weeks, and let's now use that to create something that you're passionate about. It could be a game, it could be an app, it could be to visualize data and create charts. You name it, we can do it. Let's jump over to the slides. So in last week's episode, we learned about modules in Python, creating your own modules and using the built-in Python modules. But now we want to talk about advanced modules. So basically, everything we have learned the last six weeks we can call it this right here. Built in Python, the core fundamentals, as well as object-oriented programming, how we learn those objects and classes. You create a class that can have many different objects. That's key now going forward. Now it's time to jump into all the other frameworks and modules Python has. We can really do anything we want with Python. That's what makes it so versatile. Today I'm just going to talk about a few, all right? We have Pygame. Pygame is going to reinforce all the skills you've learned. And I actually have a future episode coming out about this, but as funny as it sounds, 2D game development, it's actually going to help you understand and get further a lot quicker in your Python journey. And then we have a, a framework called PyQt. PyQt is great. It's used to make desktop applications in Python. And this is going to reinforce your understanding of OOP and modules in general. Pygame and PyQt are two examples that I'm going to show you here very soon. You could play around with Pandas. And Pandas is great great because Pandas is going to allow you to get advanced practice not just with objects but with your data structures too. So think about the data structures you already know. Lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets. Well, in Pandas you'll play with some more. And then finally, maybe you want to go the web development path. If you didn't know, yeah, Python has that. Instagram was actually made with Python using Django. Here you have Flask and Django, and these are two popular frameworks for web development in Python. So you see where I'm going with this. What are you passionate about? Find something, start to create around that. Don't jump in the deep end, right? So maybe start with Pygame or PyQt. Those are two great places. But then you can slowly begin to branch out because now when you approach a new framework, you're gonna have a good understanding of how all the gears are turning, how everything works behind the scenes. 
So this is an example of a Pi game. It's a 2D platformer game. Now before you ask, no, I didn't make this game. This is an example that I found online. It looked pretty good for what I want to talk about today. So in this Pi game, right, it's going to allow us to reinforce not just our basic code base and the structure of our code, but we're going to create classes to use with our players or the coins, the gems, the enemies, you name it. Now, how many objects do you see in the screen? What is an object? Literally everything is an object. And I put some white boxes around it, but it's not around them all. Every platform is an object. Every gem, every coin, every enemy, everything is an object. The first question you need to ask yourself, right, is what do all these objects have in common? Could we make a parent class that everything inherits, a super class? Well, yes, Josh, we could do that. And right here could be an example. So I have a super class that I made called main. Now, you don't really need to understand here because I'm not going to spend much time on it, right? But main is a class that every single object can use in my Pi game. Right? So it's first off teaching us OOP, we need to create classes, but then we need to create all these objects and use the methods as well. You can see that I've created all these properties. Every object is going to have a picture. Every object is going to have a hitbox. Every object needs a location, and every object needs speed. That's what I'm creating there. Then finally, I need to get each object on the screen somehow. So I made a method called appear. Appear is going to paste, blit, all my images at the location I want. Now every object could use this. In the real world, I'm gonna have more than just one class. My player would have a class, my enemy, my platforms, right? But they could all use my main super class. That's what we need to be thinking about. Finally, I make two objects. In the real world, we'd have more, right? Player, and then I'm giving the arguments that we need to be passed up into our constructor. So you can see that Pygame is great for reinforcing your understanding to create classes, use those classes, as well as your control structures. Let's now take a look at an example of a Pi game and what I meant by that. Guys, I don't expect you to understand everything that's happening here, right? In the near future, I'm going to have an episode out on about how learning Pi game can help you truly cement your understanding of Python's fundamentals, right? Comment below, what do you guys want to see going forward? So I have all my imports. We talked about modules. We talked about variables right here. Right? We talked about objects. I'm creating objects and I'm using methods that are coming from Pygame's font. Right? If I go down, you can see here I have classes in my game, which I'm going to show you. Right? But I'm creating classes to use along the way. And then below, right, I could create all these objects and I'm going to put these objects on my game screen somewhere. Right? So I'm not just talking about here my modules, my variables, my objects, my classes. That's everything that I taught you guys in mastering the fundamentals. Right? I'm going to link that somewhere here. But we're also using data structures because I've incorporated lists. How can I go through a list? Well, you guessed it. I'm going through a list using loops and I'm calling upon my objects along the way. This is how Pygame is gonna help reinforce everything that you learn. You just learned this. Try and practice it. If I run a quick version of the game, cool, and there you can see my overall game collecting coins along the way. All right, let's jump back over into why PyQT could be the route for you. A second great option for truly furthering your understanding is PyQt, as I've talked about. Now, PyQt takes it a step further from Pygame because with many frameworks, literally every framework, and not just many, we can use pre-built objects as well as pre-built classes. I can import these. I can import a class as long as I know how the class works and how to use it which we do, I can take on that and use that. But I can also create my own classes along the way to use those together. Take a look at my basic calculator app. 
And if you're interested about this, I have courses taking you from knowing zero all the way to knowing and mastering the fundamentals. And if apps interest you, guys, I have a full course out about how you can start creating apps in Python today. It's the link in the description. Head on down and check out the courses that I have available for you to further not just your Python understanding, but your overall career as a programmer. Do you like apps? Do you want to make games? I got it. It's in the link in the description. So in my app, what objects do we see? Well, if you've never used PyQt, you might not know. But literally, everything you see on the screen is an object, right? So I have all of these buttons. Each button, one, two, three, four, five, is an object. This screen is an object. This text is an object. My entire window is an object, right? So I need classes to be able to do this. All of these are classes that we could import into PyQt. And within each class, right, I could create an object and I could use many methods that are linked to this class. Do we need to make these methods? No, I don't need to make those. I just need to use them. So this ties into your understanding of object-oriented programming. I just showed you guys a basic calculator app, but I wanted to bring you into VS Code here to look at what PyQt looks like behind the scenes. Now PyQt is great at using pre-built classes and using them to create vibrant desktop applications. So as long as you know how classes work, you can use them and make apps. You can see here at the top when I'm importing, everything I'm importing is a class. Remember, in each class, each class has methods, right, actions, and properties or attributes that we can use within that class. And then I'm actually creating my own class too, right? I'm creating my own class home screen with methods in there. In one of my methods that I'm making, I'm making all my objects. What's the value of an object? A class. Where do we get that class? We imported that from PyQt. So for example, I'm creating text, and that text is going to be a queue label from that class that's going to have this text on the screen. Right? When I click my button, it's going to go, and I'm going to create a new object, and I'm going to go to the second screen. Right? So not just am I importing classes and using those to create these applications, but if you wanted to, you could create a multi-page application by creating a class of your own. Now you see, it's everything you've learned in one place. Let me run this quick app. It's a work in progress. Great, so here you can see my app pops up. Right, I can move it around, but when I click the button, it takes me to a completely different page. And I can now go through steps I have Let's see if I can remember my login information that I made. Yes, there we go, right? You can see that I alternated between the pages, right? That's pretty cool. Each page is a class that I made, right? And then within the class that I made, I'm using objects and classes that I imported from PyQt. That creates an app like we see here, right? And we see some other things going on, but that's the basics. Well, there you have it, guys. I only just scratched the surface. If you guys want to know more about this stuff, comment below and let me know what module, what library are you interested in. And don't worry, because I have a lot that's in store for you guys in the coming months. A lot of stuff is going to be coming out, right? And I'm going to be diving into this. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you can see that now that you know the first six weeks, right, that is really when you mastered the foundations and the fundamentals. Week seven, you're not going to master any of these frameworks, but you're going to choose a framework. And by learning that, not only are you learning a new framework, but you're also going to reinforce everything you've learned these last six weeks. That's what you should be doing in these final weeks. Now, remember guys, I have a new free Python guide that I've made for you guys that now includes Git. And as you're getting started, it's going to help you get started with Git today. It's the first link in the description. Head on down and pick yourself up a copy. If you enjoyed today's episode, so guys, hit the subscribe button. That helps me grow. It helps more students around the world see this video to help them understand how Python works and to break it down for them. So hit the subscribe button and join our growing community. All right, that's all for today's episode, and I will see you guys in the next episode of, you guessed it, Code with Josh. Until then.